Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. It's going to be a great show. We have Dr. Tim Parks with us. He is a veterinarian from Holton, Kansas. He is a tech services veterinarian from Merck Animal Health. Over 20 years of veterinary practice experience and now is being able to specialize and help the industry. We're going to talk about what a technical services veterinarian does and we'll talk about how they can help you. Stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We have a special guest, Dr. Tim Parks, and I've known Dr. Parks for many, many years. Dr. Parks is a tremendous veterinarian, had a practice in Holton. About 20 years. 20 years, Holton, Kansas, and uh, was one of those practitioners that it was awesome to be able to send students to, to, to learn from you. You always had open door, your family had always treated the vet students just great. And, and then somebody for a resource for us here at the veterinary school. And since then, um, you've sold your practice. Yep. And now, now you're working as a technical services veterinarian for, for Merck. Yep, yep. Uh, back in 2015, Young couple wanted to buy a practice and uh, came in doing a, a tremendous job with it for us right now. So went to Merck, completely different different aspect of things. Still strictly uh, working with cattle now though. So great opportunity for us. Right, right. Well, um, it actually rolls into a great opportunity for all of us because now you have time to, to spend with us and, and do some things that, that we all need help with and helping producers and, yeah. and that. I'd say one of the biggest things, one of the biggest changes is I find myself being able to answer questions, going out and finding the answers rather than calling and asking people just because there's more time for us to, to do. And really part of what we do at, is tech services with the company. Yeah, that's so what, what I found was, you know, come, going from practice to the university is very similar to, you know, um, whether you're at the university, working in a pharmaceutical company, in private practice, we're all about the same. Just some of us have more time allotted and more resources. When we were in private practice, man, it's go, 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 yeah. go, go, go. And it's you see a dog, a cat, go out here, do a herd call, a horse, yeah. and, and now you can specialize and, and really. That's, that's the biggest thing is you can specialize. Uh, when they hired me, they told me the hardest thing I'd have to do in this job was say no because for so many years we, you know, you just never said no. And uh, if we don't have time to do something or we don't, we don't have the expertise now, the opportunity's there for us to, to go find the person that can do that and, and just in, get them to the person they need to be. So just been a great opportunity on what we do now. Awesome, we'll talk a little bit then about what, what your role is as a tech service veterinarian because that's, folks, that's what we really wanna talk about today is there, there's a, unbelievable group of veterinarians in this in this and nutritionists in, in this industry that are resources at, at pharmaceutical companies. Yeah we uh, you know ultimately we work with sales force uh, when pharmaceutical company sales drive stuff uh, so so we work with the sales force in that aspect of it but 
when it's all said and done, we're all working for the same people. You know, the producer is the one that's driving everything for us. If they're not successful, we're not successful, you're not successful, yep. doesn't matter where we're at. So, so we're working with the, with the sales force. We answer questions around our products, but at the same time, we spend a lot of time research. How do the products best work? Where, where are they going to be the most benefit uh, for the producer? Our, our nutritional tech service team, they do trial after trial after trial. When is that best end point? How can we help the producer make the most amount of money and, and do it in, in a manner that, that, you know, is these animals are reaching the end point that we need them at and doing it in the right way. Absolutely. So. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to start to talk some of the questions and some of the things that Dr. Parks does to help serve the industry. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Tim Parks. He is from Holton, Kansas. He is the tech service veterinarian for Merck, which we're very thankful is a title sponsor of Doc Talk and has been from the very beginning. And um, but uh, Dr. Parks is a tremendous veterinarian with over 20 years experience of private practice and and now being able to to serve more people in the industry through this platform is just great. And and I rely on him as a resource. Many veterinarians do not just because he has the time and the resources, but he's actually one of the good guys of the, the industry and we appreciate it very, very much. Talk to me a little bit about what are some of the more common things when people are calling you or maybe the sales force is calling you, what are some of the things out there today in the industry that people are? You know, one of the biggest biggest questions that we'll get is, is usually based around vaccinations. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of it's expectation, you know, where are we, what somebody expects for the vaccine to do, uh, as, as we know, every case is different. So uh, really just being able to work with that, with that producer, work with that veterinarian, uh, and, and answer the questions as to why maybe they're not seeing the results they thought they should see, uh, what maybe we should do that could be different. Uh, one thing we really, you know, I really enjoy is, is we're working with producers, but we're doing it through the veterinarian. Uh, and and just, it's that partnership that's there. You know, I think if, if we can keep a good partnership but with tech services and the veterinarian, uh, we can just, we can really help that producer answer some of the questions. Vaccines is our first one that always comes yep. up. And then we'll also get back to, to antibiotic questions. Uh, why didn't this antibiotic work and another one did? Uh, and did we use it in the right scenario? And, and we're able to, we have the resources that, that we're able to get out there and help answer those questions. Uh, spend time, uh, work with that producer, work with the veterinarian to figure out if, you know, was the timing wrong? Uh, are we treating too late? You know, those types of things. You probably uh, spend quite a bit of time then when you get those questions, developing research yeah. around those types of questions, whether it's for that, specifically for that producer or veterinary practice, but there are probably some general questions that keep popping up about yeah. your products that hey, we need, to, we need to get out and get this research done. Yeah, we've got, you know, that's one of the things that we, we are able to do is, is we do a lot of research. Nutritionists do it on with, through implants, uh, growth technologies, things along that line. We focus more on the vaccine pharmaceutical side. So uh, timing of, of antibiotics is, is one that we look at. 
Uh, how long after antibiotics have been administered, post-treatment intervals do, do we have, post-metaphylactic intervals, uh, research along those lines. On the vaccine side, you know, uh, delayed vaccinations have been kind of a topic lately, and when's the best time to give a vaccine, what things affect vaccines, and, and what can we do to try to make our vaccines be the most effective we possibly can, they can be. Well, it's great stuff. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dr. Parks about some of the other things that he does as a tech service veterinarian serving our industry. Thanks for joining me today for Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. When we start to think about labels that are on bottles of antibiotics, it's extremely important that we follow them. The first thing that's on the label, what species is this indicated for? So it might be for cattle, for horses, for dogs, or cats. Once we understand the species that these products are labeled for, what's the indication? Bovine respiratory disease. Uh, could it be for foot rot? There's a list of species, indications. After that, what's the dosage, what's the route of administration, and then what's the withdrawal time, or the time in which it's safe to take an animal to slaughter from the time in which the animal was last treated until, until that animal was slaughtered. So, Species, indication, dosage, route of administration, withdrawal. All of these are important components on a label, so make sure that you follow them and use antibiotics judiciously. Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. My name is Dr. Cooper Williams, and I am a sports medicine specialist. I'm ISELP certified and certified within the Sports Medicine College as well. I uh, just got finished teaching an ultrasound wet lab with a group here at ENSO Discoveries in Kansas. And it was a group of students that really had a lot of enthusiasm for learning new anatomy and really elucidating some of the structures that they're not comfortable with uh, in their day-to-day -day practice. It's something that I really have a passion for doing and I really love the scanning and basically how anatomy and clinical anatomy relates to how we approach treatment of horses, especially in regard to regenerative medicine. And ENSO Discoveries has specialized in both PRP and in stem cell research. And a lot of these uh, regenerative techniques are used now to treat a variety of different structures in horses. And my job is to teach people the anatomy, the abnormal anatomy, when we have damage, and basically how to ultrasound and how to be able to guide our treatments into these abnormal uh, injuries, these structures that, that uh, we, we need to be precise in how we approach treatment. And using these regenerative techniques, you can't just put them in wherever you want to. You have to direct these treatments exactly where an injury is so that they're going to work properly. And so that's what we were working on today in a variety of areas of the body, the neck, the back, the pelvic region, the distal limb, and reviewing how we look at these anatomical structures and determine if they're abnormal, and then how to go about treating these structures. And we, we actually did processing today and used some of these regenerative techniques today to help out a few of the patients that were part of the wet lab. We cannot be islands unto ourselves, and it's important for all of us to network. We all sort of learn little tricks and techniques. So I definitely would like to thank Enso for the opportunity to be able to be here and interact with these students and to relay the information that, uh, that I've gleaned over the years. And uh, this is not the first time that I've, that I've been able to do this with Enso. They've been uh, very, very warm hosts and uh, having us come out. And they obviously like to be able to uh, put out this information and teach other veterinarians and so their passion is my passion and it's just being able to work together like this is fantastic. You spent countless hours building a strong operation, but when it comes to trichomoniasis, the odds are stacked against you. It takes just one infected bull to take down the whole herd. Damage could include open cows, lost pregnancies, and lost profits. The good news is with TrickGuard, 
A herd doesn't have to feel like a house of cards. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tim Parks. Dr. Parks is a veterinarian from Holton, Kansas. He has 20 years of veterinary practice experience and now is helping us out by being a technical services veterinarian for Merck. And you know, it's you know, whenever you see the commercial on TV and it says certain side effects may include but you know. And sometimes those happen in cows too, yep. right? Yeah, we can see we can see side effects. Uh, we, we, we mainly deal with times when a product doesn't necessarily work the way somebody thinks it should. Right. Uh, so adverse events is what they're referred to as, and uh, we, have a, we have a great ad team, pharmacovigilance team that works with adverse events uh, based out of, out of Omaha. Uh, but any call that comes in, somebody that feels like uh, they had a reaction, uh, they, they had to, the product didn't work the way they thought it should. They may feel like there may have been an efficacy issue. Uh, those questions are going to come in. Uh, they'll be answered there. Everything is, is reported uh, to the appropriate regulatory level, whether it be uh, FDA, USDA, if we, if, depending on the type of product it is. And if necessary, then as, as the field service veterinarians will, will get called in and spend a lot of time on on farms, uh, visiting with the producers and, and just trying to help them work through what they saw and, and see if there was a problem with the you product. Know, I've, I've been in this business now, well my whole life with daddy and grandpa, but as a veterinarian over 20 years and I've never called one in. I, I, I think that sometimes, just like you say, we get some phone calls because maybe something didn't go right and we're reaching for for an answer, yeah. we're investigating everything that possibly could have been the cause for something that happened in a herd or in an animal, and uh, you probably get quite a few of those. Yeah, we do. You know, and and a lot of times an adverse event may get called in, and it's really, it's really nothing more than than a question and help me understand type of scenario. Right. So, um, I kind of, anytime I approach an adverse event in that manner, I always tell tell the my sales force that I work with, you know. Um, I hope when we get done, we have a better customer than when we started, uh, huh. because that, that's ultimately our goal. Uh, we don't go out and try to give them an answer. Our goal is we want to give them the answer if we can, and, and really help them to where it doesn't happen again, and we know what caused the what they were seeing at that particular time. So yeah, well, it becomes a it becomes a learning learning thing for both sides. I sit there and I, I watch people say, "Well, I'm not going to take an Advil because it'll." cause something you know and I'm like it's modern medicine man I mean this, <laughs> this has gone yeah. through the this is like the one in a millionth yeah chance I mean there the, and without these tools animal health food production food security I mean what you all do and provide for us is just phenomenal yeah it's, it becomes a balancing act you know a lot of times on on, on everything we do does the good outweigh the bad? And luckily, with the products we deal with, the good's a lot, a lot of, much more on the high side than what our <laughs> bad is. So that's, that's the good part of it. Absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do a wrap-up with Dr. Parks, and we're going to talk about all the educational opportunities and things that he's providing for producers, veterinarians, consumers, and much more. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back after these messages. Your investment in the beef checkoff is opening new doors for beef. Today and tomorrow, our commitment to long-term planning helps ensure your profitability from one generation to the next. Hello, this is uh, Caleb Plyler, Plyler and Son Charlays. This is my son, Hook, and my wife, Brianna. And we operate a uh, purebred Charlay operation in Hope, Arkansas. You know, in the uh, business that we're in, the beef checkoff dollars are very important to us. A lot of that money is to educate people just like kids uh, that's in Huck's class, the importance of eating beef. You know, it's a high protein product that uh, it's a very important uh, part of our diet. Sometimes we get this uh, bad rap as uh, uh, beef is not, uh, you know, what we really need to be uh, doing from a dietary standpoint. 
but uh, you know being able to get to the kids and let them know that you know beef it is what needs to be for dinner you know one of the the bigger things with our family is uh, getting to go out and show off some of our cattle Huck he gets to show uh, a lot of heifers uh, a lot of what we do trying to uh, get him into showing is the fact that it's teaching him discipline respect for the animals and it's going to continue to uh, give him lifelong skills throughout his life. But I think it's very important that uh, you know the next generation understands how important uh, the beef industry is. Just like Huck here, we plan on him one day operating this farm. And uh, you know, if, if we can do that, we're doing what we need to. Because you know, this country is uh, founded upon people that you know have family traditions and, and do a really good job of keeping those traditions going. Huck, one day, what kind of cows do you want to grow up to have, you think? Charlays. Charlays, all right. You know, uh, if the beef checkoff dollars are going to really good causes and really promoting beef, then uh, the consumers are going to want to want to buy more beef, and, and that uh, leads for us making more money in the end, and, uh, and it really helps the quality of people's cow herds because we're able to enhance our genetics even more. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tim Parks, veterinarian from Holton, Kansas and a technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health and, and Merck supplies education and you, and you get to be a big part of that. I mean, you, your job is very similar to what mine is here at the university. Yeah, we honest. do. We do a lot of education uh, at all levels. Uh, you know, we're, we educate the sales force uh, as new products come out. Uh, we spend a lot of time educating them on the, on what the product is, what the benefits of the product are, uh, you know, things along that line. Um, veterinarians uh, just finished up a, a round of some continuing education meetings. The opportunity to to get some of the newer information out there uh, and and put it in have meetings at, at in a in a kind of a manner that it's a smaller group scenario to where it becomes to really conversational and uh, able to to get a lot of information out that way. A lot of producer meetings, spending a lot of time talking to producers and, and uh, working with the veterinarians through through those. So yeah, education's a big part of what we do. So if, if producers or groups out there wanted uh, a veterinarian or a tech service veterinarian from Merck uh, to come out and be a part of their meeting or, or mm -hmm. something to that nature, would they just get a hold of somebody at the sales force, get work through their, their, their veterinarian? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we encourage them to work through their veterinarian. The veterinarian can get a hold of the sales the sales representative in that area and and then uh, that sales rep is we they do a great job of setting up meetings and and uh, working with that veterinarian to, to to get meetings set up so I hear you're starting a new program called cattle care 365 and it'll launch and and be out there yep cattle care 365 uh, we just launched it at uh, NCBA so uh, program kind of based around what dairy care 365 was uh, the program very similar in the dairy segment uh, but focusing on the beef and uh, really work around cattle handling. Uh, the first module is going to be based around what, what takes place at the processing barn. Uh, so short segments uh, to, just to, to give people an opportunity to see how things are done from another, another viewpoint basically. So. Awesome. Well, it's one of those things that uh, Merck continues to bring forward whether it's for animal health, animal welfare, uh, help us uh, yeah. make a living. Yeah, we, we really focus a lot on uh, value adds. I, I guess I refer to them as things that aren't in a bottle uh, that really that really help with the the industry move forward. So. Well, when the if the products 
uh, are similar, people are going to work with who they like. Yeah. And uh, y'all have great uh, service to us and, and to our producers, and we're very thankful. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Well, I appreciate everything you do. Um, thanks for your partnership with us at yeah. K-State, and uh, um, we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> Job security. Yeah. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk today. Uh, it's great to have guests like Dr. Tim Parks here. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Tim Parks. Thanks for watching us today, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.